For this energy conservation problem, I recommend that you pause the video and have a look at the problem statement before you see what I do in way of a solution. Here's one you're going to like. This is a problem about a golfer. It says a golfer hits a golf ball while standing on a 15 meter high cliff. So of course, <laughs> this lends itself to a picture very nicely. So here's the cliff and it says that this cliff is at a height 15 meters. And it says a golfer, it's a golf ball here from this cliff, and it says it with a seven iron. Little do we know about what seven irons do maybe, but nevertheless, it's a high lofty club. It's launched at a speed of 25 meters per second, an angle of 70 degrees. So here's the golf ball being launched. 70 degrees is the angle theta, and it says that the launch takes place with a speed of 25 meters per second. So what is it that happens? <laughs> Golf ball follows gravity, gets pulled like so, and eventually hits the ground there. Great. So what else do we know here? <laughs> A few things. He says that that one of the points of interest here is what is the height when it reaches the top of its trajectory. So we're going to call this this is another h, like so, and we don't know what it is. Great. Uh, the other thing it asks for is it says how fast is it going when it hits the ground? Just before it hits the ground. So here's a v also. Oh boy. And it says specifically, use energy methods. So, what kind of energy methods will we use? Principle of conservation of total energy. So, principle of conservation. Hmm. Of total energy. Some people abbreviate this and they call this P-O-C-O-E, Principle of Conservation of Energy is the abbreviation for this. So what does that mean? Well, what it says is that if there are no dissipative forces involved in the system at all, and we're not involving any here because we're saying that this is a case where this is going through the air and we're forgetting about air drag for now. So, okay, fine. Uh, if that's true, then what happens is this, the kinetic energy plus potential energy, at any position, really, is the same as the kinetic energy plus potential energy at any other position. We'll call them one and two, just for the sake of arbitrary. One and two. So that's going to be true here. And what you always have to do <laughs> when you're doing energy problems is this. You got to say, where's one and where's two? Well, one of the points we're interested in, because we know something about it, is the launch. We're going to call launch one. And next, it says what happens at the top of the trajectory. Let's call that one two. Then it says what happens just before it hits the ground. Let's call that point three. So the total energy then at one is the same as total energy at two is the same as total energy at three. Great. So, okay, that's fine. Let's begin to apply this now. Kinetic energy plus potential energy at one. What's that? Well, Kinetic energy, one half mv1 squared. That's the velocity at the beginning, which is 25 meters per second. I've actually labeled it one already, this is good. And then this is plus mgh1. Uh, this is h1, 15 meters is where it was launched from. Great, that must equal one half mv2 squared. And uh, what's V2? Uh, V2 is the velocity this has right at the very top. Uh, we didn't really draw that. What does V2 look like? Well, V2 actually is like this. I've drawn it horizontally. Does that make sense to be horizontal? Well, it isn't going up anymore, and it hasn't started to go down. So all that's left is horizontal. So it's horizontal velocity. Fine, that's V2. OK. Uh, V2, 1 half mv2 squared plus mgh2. Okay, so those two things are equal to each other. So then, 
as usual, we got to identify it. What do we know and what do we not know? We don't know M. We know V1, he told us. We know, don't know M. We know G, that's constant. We know H1, that was given. Um, H2 is what we don't know. M, we don't know. V2, we know a little about V2. Uh, let's break that out separately here. What is V2? Well, it didn't lose any horizontal velocity at all. So V2 then is the same horizontal velocity as it had in the beginning. And so in the beginning, the horizontal velocity is just V1 times the cosine of the angle theta. Great. So since we know V1 and theta, we know V2 also. So here's our equation. Um, a lot of, oh boy, M is an unknown, but it actually is everywhere in the equation, isn't it? What happens if you factor out an M from the left and an M from the right, and that result is M's cancel, the M's are gone. So the only thing we don't know is H2. Fine, we're in good shape. So now what we have to do is do a little mathematical interlude in which we then solve this and eventually find out that H2 is equal to H1 plus V1 squared over 2G times 1 minus cosine squared theta. Ha! We know all that stuff. H1 is known, V1 squared is known, G is known, theta is known. So this just turns out to be a number. And so here's the number. It is 43.1 meters. Good. That's 43.1 meters above the ground. So now, does that make sense? Yeah, it goes up from where it started out at 15 meters. So now it's above that at 43.1 meters. OK. There's a B part, which says, what's the velocity just before it hits the ground? Well, we can just say 1 half mv1 squared plus mgh1 equals 1 half mv3 squared plus mgh3. Ah, what's h3? Well, we have defined, really, our position of where gravitational potential energy is zero. It's the ground level. It doesn't have to be, but it is. So then we could work this out, and I'm afraid we've uh, run out of time for now, but I'll let you do that, the rest of that one. What? <laughs>